Okay. So when we're solving number 17, the first thing we want to do is get the cubed root alone. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. So I've got the cubed root of 4x plus 3 equals 5. Well then, the way we get rid of a cubed root is to cube both sides. So I'm going to cube this side and cube that side, and those cancel out. And I'm left with 4x plus 3 equals 125. So then I want to solve for x, so I'm going to subtract 3 and say 4x equals 122, and then divide by 4. So x equals 122 divided by 4, which doesn't simplify exactly. It's 30.5, but either way is acceptable, or either answer is acceptable. 122 fourths or 30.5. Now, as far as checking, we really don't need to worry about cube roots because uh, it's only the square roots where we have issues with negatives. And when I plug in 30.5 right here, it's a positive. It's a positive. It's so all good. So let's look at 18. Similar situation, I've got a cubed root equal a number. So in order to get rid of a cubed root, we cube both sides. So I've got 5x plus 2 equals 4 cubed. That's 4 cubed. Ready to power chart 6 to 4? Okay. So then in solving this, I'm going to subtract 2. 5x equals 62. Divide by 5. x equals 62 fifths. Okay? Or 12.2. In that case, um, like I said, it's a cube root. I don't really have to worry about extraneous solutions, so there we go. Now let's talk about 19. Um, in order to get rid of the cube root, I'm still going to have to cube, but I can't get rid of this 5. So what I'm going to have to do is cube both sides and understand that when I cube, things that are being multiplied, I have to distribute the power. So the cubed root cubed is x plus 5. 5 cubed is 125, and the cubed root of x minus 1 cubed is just x minus 1. So I've got x plus 5 equals 125x minus 125. So I'm going to subtract x and get 124x. So I'm going to add 125 and get 130. So x equals 130 divided by 124. Whatever decimal that is. Um, like I said, we don't have to worry about uh, negatives and positives, so there we go. Okay, on 20. Uh, what would I want to do first? Well. I want to go ahead and get rid of the 7 by dividing. So that's gone, and I'm left with the cubed root of 5x minus 7 equals 12. Well, in order to get rid of a cubed root, we cube. So I'm left with 5x minus 7 equals, what's 12 cubed? 1,728. Okay, so then I'm going to add 7. So 5x equals one seven three five and then divide by five. Have you divided? What is it? Three hundred and forty seven. All right, and there we go. Now let's talk about twenty one. Now twenty one and twenty two are both even roots, so I do have to worry about extraneous solutions. I might not have to in this case because everything is positive, but I'll still check. In order to get rid of a fourth root, I take the fourth power. So I've got 5x equals 625. Okay. Divide by 5, and I get 125. And there we go. 125 times 5 is 625. The 4 through 625 is 5. So it works. Let's check this one, or let's do this one. So to get rid of a 4th um, root, I'll raise it to the 4th power. Those cancel out. 5x minus 3 equals 3 to the 4th, which is 81. I'm going to add 3 and get 84 and divide by 5, so 84 fifths. Okay, in this case, if I plug in 84 fifths, that's just 84. 84 minus 3 is 81, so the fourth root of 81 is 3, and that's what it said it equaled, so we're good. Okay? All right, so these last four problems are... Solving inequalities. In order to get rid of a square root, we square both sides. So I'm going to square this side and square that side. So I've got 2x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 16. I'm going to subtract 4 and say 2x is greater than or equal to 16 less 4, 12. So x has got to be greater than or equal to 6. But anytime you're dealing with a square root, what's inside the square root always has to be positive. I don't care what this inequality is. 2x plus 4 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. And then that means 2x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 4. x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 2. 
Well, here is greater than or equal to negative 2, and here is greater than or equal to 6. They're only both defined when x is greater than or equal to 6. So my answer is from 6 to infinity. Okay. Now on this one, the first thing I want to do is subtract the 5. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So the square root of x plus 1 is less than or equal to 8. Then I'm going to square both sides, so x is plus 1 is less than or equal to 64. And then x has got to be less than or equal to 63. But I also know that x plus 1 needs to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So here is greater than or equal to negative 1, and here is less than or equal to 63. The only time they're both defined is between the two. So my answer is from negative 1 to 63. Now, all four of these problems have equal to bars, but you have to remember that if there's not an equal to bar, then we use parentheses, not brackets. So on this one, I want to get rid of the square root, so I square both sides. Here's another multiple. x plus 12 has got to be greater than or equal to 3x minus 10. If I subtract 3x or subtract the x, I don't care. I'm going to subtract 3x and say negative 2x. I'm going to subtract 12 and get is greater than or equal to negative 24. Okay. Then I'm going to divide by a negative 2, so switch the symbol and say positive 12. x has got to be less than or equal to 12. But mm, anytime I'm dealing with a square root, i got to say what's on the inside needs to be greater than or equal to 0, which means x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 12. But then I've also got this one. 3x minus, minus, minus 10 needs to be greater than or equal to 0. So 3x needs to be greater than or equal to 10. x needs to be greater than or equal to 10 thirds. So on my number line, I have x needs to be greater than or equal to negative 12, greater than or equal to 10 thirds, and less than or equal to 12. The only time they're all three satisfied is between these two numbers. So my answer is from 10 thirds to 12. Okay, last one. First thing I want to do is get rid of the three. So I'm going to divide by, well, yeah, I'm going to divide by 3. Okay, so the cubed root of x plus 5 needs to be less than or equal to negative 5 thirds. Well, we get rid of a cube by cubing both sides. So I say the cubed root, oops, just kidding, that's fine. x plus 5 is less than or equal to, uh, negative 5 cubed is negative 125, 3 cubed is 27. So x has got to be less than or equal to negative 125 over 27 minus 5. Now I could simplify that by saying common denominator is 27. So 125 minus 5 times 27. What's 5 times 27? 135? So negative 135. So that is negative 260 over 27, which is kind of ugly. But I don't have to deal with um, the inside because it's a cube root. And you can have negatives under a cube root. So my answer is less than or equal to that. So negative infinity to negative 260 over 27 or whatever that decimal is. And then it'll back up. Okay? Um, let's see. I'll do some solving. Quadratics. Okay. Uh, so say we want to solve when does x squared less than or equal to, um, let's do 9. How do you get rid of a square? Square root. But when you square root, you got two answers. So I have to put the positive on this side, repeat the symbol, and put the negative on that side. Then I ask myself, does it make sense? Is negative 3 less than 3? And if it does, then um, my answer is just going to be from negative 3 to 3. If I were working x squared plus 1 is greater than or equal to, let's say, um, 4, then I'm going to subtract 1. x squared is greater than or equal to 3. Take the square root. x is greater than or equal to the square root of 3. Repeat the symbol and put a negative square root of 3 on this side. But it doesn't make sense. Negative square root of 3 is not greater than square root of 3. So this is one of those cases where x has got to be greater than square root of 3, but less than, x is less than or equal to negative square root of 3. And so you can see my answer is going to be from negative infinity to negative square root of 3 with a bracket. Uh, yep. And then 
pick back up a Gaza square with your ring, go to infinity. So there's my answer. Okay. What if I'm solving something like this? X plus 2 quantity squared is less than um, 8. Yeah, sure. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, take the square root of both sides because of the square is the outermost thing. So I've got x plus 2 is less than or equal to the square root of 8. I don't want to do that. Let's make that an 81. Okay, so I've got uh, x plus 2 is less than or equal to... No, I don't know. Why do I make it equal to? More than equal to. Okay, less than 9 but greater than negative 9. And then I need to get rid of the 2, so I have minus 2 from both sides, all three sides. Negative 11 is less than x, which is less than 7. Does it make sense? Negative 11 is less than 7? Yes, it does. So my answer is going to be from negative 11 with parentheses to 7 close parentheses. Okay. Well, what if I'm solving something like this? Um, x squared... We'll say plus 3x minus 10 is um, greater than 0. Okay, in this case, I can't solve for x to get it by itself, but I can factor. So I'm looking for factors of negative 10 that add up to positive 3. So positive 5 and negative 2. And then my answers are negative 5 and positive 2. So then I just graph and I say, okay, I know my quadratic crosses at negative 5 and at positive 2. It's a positive quadratic, which means it opens up. And so, when is this greater than zero? Well, it's greater than zero when it's above the x-axis. So it's above the x-axis over here and over here. So I would say from negative infinity to negative five. Not included because that's not included. And then pick back up a two and go to infinity. If I had something like this, um, x squared, let's say, <coughs> mm. X squared plus 28 is less than or equal to 11X. So then what I want to do is get everything on the same side with the quadratic. So minus 11X, put it in the middle, plus 28 is less than or equal to 0. And then I want to factor. So factors of 28 add up to negative 11, negative 4, and negative 7. So I know that my answers are where it crosses the x-axis are 4 and 7. I know that it's a positive quadratic, so it opens up. And then when is it less than or equal to 0? It's less than or equal to 0 between 4 and 7. So my answer is from 4 included because of the equal to and 7 included. Okay. The only other situation you might find yourself in is if the x squared is negative, then you might have to deal with a, a problem with an open sign. But um, in that case, you just say whether it's positive or negative. And you can always move it to make it positive and then deal with it from there. Okay.